After a lifetime of struggling with her weight and her 60th birthday fast approaching, my client Jenny decided that it was time to finally put her weight issues to bed for once and for all. Asking for help is something that Jenny admits she struggles with. And on top of that, she had thyroid issues and she found herself shooting on herself, saying that she should know how to do this and she should just be able to take care of this on her own. She says that when she was joining the program, she felt a bit foolish because she had never done something like this but if we want different result then we have to take different action and the results that Jenny got for herself have been tremendous in this interview Jenny talks about how her childhood shaped her relationship with her body and with food the different diets that she tried all through the years how even being an avid exerciser didn't help her get the weight off and how finally approaching her 60th birthday she made a major change that allowed her to so far release 30 pounds despite thyroid issues and despite a lifetime of struggling her story is truly inspirational and I am so grateful that she was willing to share it with us if you're new here hey I'm healthy Emmy I'm a nutritionist and a weight loss specialist and if you want to go on the same journey that Jenny went on and work with me as well as a mindset coach and a nutrition coach just click the link in the down bar I love this. I think this is so inspirational. And I think that what you're about to say is going to inspire people. For your birthday, you had a decision to make about how you were going to celebrate yourself. Tell us about that decision. Okay. I have always wanted a pair of diamond studs from Tiffany's. I want that blue box, right? Um, and I thought this is the year I'm going to buy these for myself. But what I decided to do instead is to put my money into my health. So I joined um, SOS and I don't want to suggest to people that this is so expensive that it costs the same as diamonds because it doesn't, but it, it you know, I decided to do that. And um, I just, I'm so glad that I did it because I just, every single day, you know, I feel better. I look in the mirror. I might as well have done. I just feel like I'm sparkling. Honestly, I do. You know, um, I love, you know, I I've lost um, about 30 pounds and I think I'll, you know, I'm, I'm continuing on. Um, probably I would like to do about 40, but I don't even really care anymore in a weird way. I just, I feel so good and so healthy and I'm glad that I invested in myself instead. You know, I can always get those. I'll get them one day, you know, um, mm -hmm. but um, this is much, much better, much, much more valuable. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's important to note here that so many of us try so many methods, but we do feel invisible. You know, we do feel invisible, no matter the personalized care that's promised. Um, we, you know, that's not often the case, you know, um, with a lot of programs. And I think a big part of why you're so successful, not a big part, you're, I mean, your curriculum is great, but, um, a substantive part of why you're successful is that you make all of us feel heard because you listen and, um, you know, you respond when we write, you respond every week, you answer questions that we ask um, and you do it with um, like exquisite patience because I know that you get a lot of the same questions over and over, but um, the passion you have for this really comes, comes through and we appreciate it. I'm speaking for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying that. I recognize how delicate of a, of a journey this is. And my if I were to get frustrated by being asked the same question over and over again, I can only imagine how frustrated the client is that has been trying to figure this out for decades. So I have mm -hmm. immense patience because my client has had patience going decades, still not finding the answer. Uh, and mm -hmm. I appreciate clients like you that are you know so invested you ask questions you show up you complete your modules so it takes two to tango and it's been it's been a joy with you thus far 
why don't we start with the very beginning of where does your story begin? Probably in early adolescence, you know, um, I began to struggle with, with my weight probably around the age of 12 or 13. Uh, you know, that happens for many reasons, but I think I realized early on, I, a funny thing that happened was that I got too much attention from boys and men as a child. And I think I'm not alone in that probably, you know, it's not something I ever really thought about, but I quickly sort of learned that if I was a certain size, I would become invisible, which sounds really sad now, but it, um, but it's, I think there's some accuracy to that. I applaud you for uh, talking about that. You know, that's something that I see with a lot of women with an array of histories and some quite intense histories with, you know, sexual abuse or whatever it is. And so manipulating our body weight so that we can stay safe. And um, it's a varying degrees depending on the, the person in their history. But yeah, I, I think that's a lot more common than has talked about. Um, I agree. And I don't think you realize that as a child, something that you realize uh, gradually over the course of your life. I think that life has its beautiful ups and downs and, and accomplishments and happinesses and so forth. But there's always this feeling in the background no matter what, that you're either not enough or that you're much too much. Uh, it's just a feeling that sort of attended to everything else that happens in life. And it's tiring. You know, you clearly are a very capable, smart, driven woman. Like you said, you are an avid exerciser. You've had great accomplishments in your life. You've you've done things that would make anybody say, wow, you should feel really proud. But as you noted, lurking in the background was that feeling of not feeling like you were enough and the weight not being where you wanted it to be. And that's um that's heartbreaking because these are moments in life that are so they're they're ones that are on the highlight reel when you look back on your life and to hear that there's that little cloud behind it uh it's it's heartbreaking to say the least i think it is i mean just just listening to you say that you know back to me it brings tears to my eyes because it shouldn't be a case you know i would i would say to myself well i can't be overweight because i make all this effort and so i think that i was kind of have been lying to myself in that way, you know, seeing myself differently in the mirror than, and, and you know, looking at the scale and saying, well, um, most people at this weight are overweight, but I am not overweight at this weight. How could I possibly be overweight if I'm putting this much effort in and I'm so strong and, you know, that kind of thing. And I'd say things like, oh, I'm, built like a cement block. I'm so muscular. That's where my weight comes from. But the truth is, is that no matter what, it's been too much weight for too long. And I usually say to clients that are in your position where, you know, how can it be? I work so hard. I've tried all the diets. I move my body like crazy. How can it be that I'm still struggling? And I say to clients that are in your position, well, that's the exact reason why this is going to work because you're a hard worker. You're willing to put the effort in. You don't give up. You've had all these accomplishments that prove that when you set your mind to something, you do it. It's just been misplaced. We've had your effort going towards something that's not going to help you be successful. So let's shift it to something that actually will work. So your efforts do pay off. You're willing to do the work clearly. And now you're in a place where the benefit is, is here waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you tried to do to alleviate your struggles with food and with weight. Uh, as a, as a young adult, um, you know, I did what many women do, you know, I tried to starve myself and I, went on Weight Watchers and um, I tried, um, gosh, any number of, you know, no, no drinking beer, um, whatever the fad was at the time. I'm sure I tried that. Um, and then I had children. Um, my first daughter was born when I was 28 and my second child was born when I was 32. And I never really could get rid of the weight um, again common story for women, um, especially because 
uh, motherhood <laughs> involves so much food production. It's literally, it sometimes feels like 20 years of producing meals. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's this sort of heavy preoccupation with food, um, you know, from when your children are babies. And I think that it's hard to take time for yourself. Um, a common story, you know, so it took a, you know, it just years and years went by um, of me trying to uh, get rid of the weight and not able to do that. I love the story of how you and I came together, uh, thanks to the YouTube algorithm. So do you want to share that? I'm an editor, so I'm on the computer a lot. And sometimes I just need a break and or I don't know how to move forward. So my way of procrastinating, which is not a bad kind of procrastination, is that I love music. So I'm always looking at new music and listening to new music. And sometimes I just go onto YouTube because I want to see what the musicians look like. It's that simple. And usually that's my algorithm. I get lots of music um, and a lot of cashmere sweaters because I also procrastinate by looking at sweaters. <laughs> but then one day you came, you were right there. And I, um, I just clicked, you know, I just clicked on you and I started listening and it, it's kind of crazy because you came to me at exactly the moment when I was prepared to hear what you had to say and what you, your message struck me as so sensible. Um, it struck me as sort of a combination of everything that I had learned, everything that I believe in, such as food as medicine. I'm a big believer in that, you know, and here you were saying everything that I thought, you know, that I believe, but that doctors have said to me, well, that's not, you know, that's, that's not, that's a fine idea, but that's not reality. So that's how I found you. So we can thank music for that. <laughs> <laughs> and when the, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, right? You know, it's true too. And, and, um, you, I found you uh, right near a milestone birthday, right? So I've been thinking a lot about this birthday um, and how I was going to celebrate it, and what it meant to me and that kind of thing. And when I heard you speak, I watched a couple of your videos and I gave it some thought and then I contacted you and then you wrote back to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked you the question of what was it that made you decide to send it an application and you said you know the first reason was what we had just talked about actually having a person here who's going to see you and listen to you and put their hands on your shoulder and guide you you also mentioned a couple of other reasons and I would love to talk about uh, how you wanted to you know quietly set an example for loved ones around you do you want to talk about that a little bit I do a little bit. Um, I, you know, I want to be respectful, but I have a couple of people that I love very much who have been struggling with weight for a couple of different reasons. Um, you know, completely out of their hands, illness, long haul COVID, that kind of thing. Um, different kinds of stresses have um, landed them with uh, much too much, not much too much, more weight than they're used to or comfortable with. And it's just, just as you spoke to me at a moment that I could hear it, someone else has to be spoken to at a moment they can hear it, right? It's really annoying to say, hey, you know, I've lost all this weight on this program. You should do it, this whole should thing. It doesn't work, right? And I thought, you know, maybe I can help myself and I can help these people that I love by modeling you know, weight loss um, and not talking about it all the time, but just modeling it and seeing if it rubs off and it can become, you know, a little bit of a buddy system. And, um, and I can, I can report that I have these people, at least three people now um, addicted to carrot cake oatmeal. <laughs> and each one of them says to me, you know, when I eat that every morning, I feel like I've started the day in a much better place. And I feel like, you know, they just feel good about the start to the day. And then that sort of 
extends into the next meal and then the next meal sometimes, you know, and that's a win. Yeah. I think. Rising tides raise all ships. So if you are able to help yourself, you help others as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah. And you know, I, people always say, Oh, Emmy, you're so lucky. Your dad eats this way. Years and years went by before he ever considered eating this way, just from us modeling it around him. So we plant seeds that we don't often recognize. Uh, and, you know, somebody might see you, uh, for example, a family reunion, and they see you eating something and looking fantastic, that can plant a seed with them and we'll never, ever hear about it. So you're planting these little seeds everywhere. And I know that this video is going to be so impactful too. The- well, you know, who knows? <laughs> yep. So you had some mixed emotions when starting the program. And I want to name those because it's what I want to convey here is that it's okay to have mixed emotions when we start this journey. We don't have to be completely confident and excited about it. So do you want to share how you honestly were feeling when you were starting this program? I will tell you that I felt a little silly, a little foolish. I mean, is this just going to be another, you know, I I was, I wouldn't tell anyone that I had done it. Right. Um, uh, I felt a little doubtful, but I also felt um, a measure of hope. Like I had a feeling about it. And the biggest thing I think is that um, I decided to ask for help. I think that was the hardest part. I, I had this idea, well, my God, I should know all of this. I should know about you know, vegetables and oatmeal and all the rest of it. I should know this. Um, I shouldn't have to ask for help. Um, but I thought that was part of the um, gift to myself, actually, was to ask for help and realize that I've tried so many times, I can't do this. I'm going to ask for help. Let somebody else, you know, let let the experts weigh in. I don't try to fix my own car. I don't try to, you know, do so many things. There's so many things that I leave to the professionals, but for some reason I felt that I should know better and I didn't. And um, so, yeah, so I felt a little foolish and doubtful, but I decided to ask for help. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. was the hardest part of this. This is asking for help for me. It was a lot harder than um, following the plan, honestly. Mm-hmm. Where does that come from? I have children. Um, you know, I'm divorced. I've been used to doing things on my own for a very long time. And um, and so I think I should know how to do everything. But that's part of modeling things, you know, for my children. I'm always trying to model um, strength for them. And I think, you know, asking for help is uh, a sign of strength. You know? I, I could not. Well, I can say it. I can say it, but I had to do it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's a sign of self-awareness and self-respect asking Mm -hmm. for help. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's time to show off. Tell us what you've achieved. I have lost 30 pounds. I think I was like two ounces shy of 30 pounds when I weighed yesterday. Um, And that feels amazing. Um, I don't know. I haven't really measured myself or anything but, um, you know, I've gone down a couple of sizes and all of the clothes in my closet that I bought that I hoped looked good, but never really did are fantastic. And so that's been really fun. Um, maybe more importantly, though, um, my hair is shiny. My skin is healthy. I had troubles with, um, swollen ankles, um, in the heat, you know, having to do with blood pressure and so forth ever since I was a teenager and that is gone. And that's incredible to me because I understand now, um, what extra weight and certain kinds of foods do, um, to aggravate inflammation. Inflammation is a very frightening thing. And so much of it, you can't see, you know, so much of it happens inside, I think. And, um, and that my ankles not swelling is huge, not to mention, you know, my vanity, what woman wants to have swollen ankles, right? (laughs) So 
all of that. My sleep is incredible. I never wake up in the middle of the night anymore. That's that, and that's remarkable. Um, what else? That's a lot. That's a lot. And actually, um, all the exercise that I do, I've noticed that it's easier. You know, it's easier. I, you know, I always climbed mountains, right? But it's really easier to climb up those mountains. You know, I hadn't really thought about that because you're carrying a, a lighter load. You also mentioned one of my favorite wins of yours was the the pride and the ability to say, I did this. I set my mind to something and I, I accomplished it. Yes, that that's an amazing feeling. And I will say that shortly after I signed on with you, I was laid off from a job that um, it, it was shot. You know, I was shocked. Um, uh, a whole group of us were laid off. And that's a situation where you might go straight for the Ben and Jerry's, you know, not once or twice, but like for a couple of months. And I was about a month into this, I think, when it happened. And I just I just thought, you know what? No, they took my job, but they don't get my sense of self-worth and they don't get my accomplishments. And just no. No, 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 no. And so I stuck to it. And I think it's really helped me um, get through a difficult time. Yeah. And you'd also mentioned how the confidence in this area of your life has given you confidence in other areas of your life, too. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yes. Um, I think that I come across um, generally as being confident. And um, people describe me as being confident and um, personable and so forth. But now I actually feel it from the inside, you know, not I me, mean, not every moment of every day, but, it, you know, it, it, it really is a kind of a feeling of accomplishment that extends into everything. You know, life is a little more fun. Um, and there's this, um, what I mentioned about always having that feeling, even during the high moments of being not enough or too much, I find I forget about that. I forget myself. And I can really focus on what you would call the primary foods. That's what I focus on now. I don't think, you know, I don't think about what I look like when I'm, you know, doing these activities. I just do them, you know. It uh, losing losing the weight has sort of freed up creative space in my mind, if that makes sense. What advice would you give to somebody that is in the position that you were in before we got started? Um, I'd say give it a go. I'd say go ahead and give it a go. Um, it is, um, you know, it's a commitment of, it's a financial commitment. Um, not, not really that much. Even as a person who's been laid off, I would say it's not that much, but it's enough that you take it seriously, right? So take yourself seriously and make that commitment and give it a try. And I did see that someone in one of the, in the Facebook group asked for advice about going into the master's program. And I would say that that's um, very much worth it because the foundation program is great, but it's um, short and what you need, you, all of us, what I need, let's just say what I need was to take it further so that I could get back to, you know, the challenges of real life, right? Um, and having and normalizing it, I guess. It's no, it's no longer new to me. It's just normalized. It's just part of my day and um, part of my week and part of my life and part of my, you know, shopping cart and um it's not even that much a part of my conversation anymore. It's so normalized. I would say take a chance on yourself. Give it a try. It's a, it's a good curriculum. And the thing is, it's not um, gimmicky. There's nothing gimmicky about what you're doing. It appeals to me because it's sensible. It's um, delicious. And it's doable. It's doable. It's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. And um, and I, I appreciate the work that you've put into this. It's a beautiful program and we need you. So we, uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs>
If you made it to the end of the video, I want you to comment diamond because what Jenny has achieved is more valuable than a diamond. It's priceless. It's invaluable. Thank you, Jenny, for sharing your story with us. And thank you for watching. I love you, honeys. If you enjoyed this, you're going to love all of my other client stories, which are linked right here on the screen. So make sure to check those out. I love you, honeys, and I'll see you in my next one.